This episode of Jack is brought to you by Weaver Leather. Jack is by uh, Jack's Electric Spark, who is by Shining Spark out of a Hollywood Jack Mare. And he is out of Wizard's Baby Doll, Roxy, who a lot of people are familiar with. And uh, Wizard's Baby Doll is by Wizard Jack out of Boot Scoot and Dolly, who is by Gunner's Rambo. So there are a lot of uh, million dollar sires, world champions, futurity champion, those types of horses in his pedigree. And we'd like to just start making some videos because we've always wanted to follow one of the horses from the beginning for as long as they let us go because that's what's going to end up happening. Jack will have a lot of say over what happens to him during the training because he'll get to choose how far he lets us take him because at some point, you know, Roxy made the decision to let us train her to be bridalless. Other horses have made the decision, I'm not going there. I'm not interested. I'm not, I'm just not trustworthy. I'm not really willing to try that. So Jack will have a lot of say over his training. But right now what we want to do is just bring him out and evaluate him. Because right. really we pretty much just met him. Right, and, and this is uh, Roxy's last foal, Jack mm -hmm. is. Because she passed away last year, yeah. as did his sire. His sire. his sire also died last year. He's a million dollar sire in the NRHA, the National Reigning Horse Association. And uh, he also made the finals at all the major events. So he was a great horse and a great sire as well. So let's take Jack out and evaluate him. Okay, I'm gonna grab Jack and the first thing I wanna do with him is not get run over, stay back there. I'm gonna take him down, I've never hooked on, never led him before. So I'm gonna be evaluating how he respects my space. I'm going to take him out and the first thing I actually wanna do is turn him loose and watch him run around because before I even start training, I can actually tell a lot by how he uses his body and just how he reacts, so here we go. So the first thing I notice when I lead him out is he's, he's a little pushy. I understand that he feels a little bit lost because this is a new place and he's never been out here before. But as he's a two-year-old stallion, that doesn't give him the right. No matter what age he was, but especially if he's thinking about being kept a stallion, he really needs to be respectful. So even though he's not being perfect, I'm still, I'm going to turn him loose because I want to evaluate him. I don't like right there how he pushes his shoulder into me. Right now I'm going to turn him loose, but I'm going to try to step back away from him. I don't want to chase him, but I don't want him following me either. I think it's interesting to watch the first reactions, and that's one of the reasons why I want to leave him alone, because I can see his personality. Is he curious? Is he dominant? Is he scared? How does he react to this situation before I step in and start changing it? Because what you're going to see over the training is you're going to see things change. For instance, these young horses come in here and if we watch them when I chase them in a minute, when they run around, there's going to be their natural way that they use their hind end to stop. But what we always notice is by the time we've trained them for six months or a year, what, what happens when they're out here is they slide like they will when we're training them. So they, they start to carry their training with them. So with these young horses, some of the first things I want to do is just, I want to see how does he react to new things. So he's looking at this roping dummy and you can tell a lot about their personality like right there he he got scared but he kind of just hunkered down and and jumped but not excessively so he's got quite a bit of confidence so it, it's interesting to me we make some noise whether it's banging on the walls and that's interesting because we're making noise and he actually turned and started kind of running towards the noise. He's not, I mean, he got a little excited, but not a lot and not a lot of scared, which is good. We'd like to end up with a horse that's balanced right in the middle <laughs> between being uh, still respectful enough that you can train it. So it's got a little bit of humility, but we also want them to have some confidence and he's looking pretty balanced right now. If anything, he's leaning towards the confidence side, mm -hmm. which you also kind of expect from a stallion. So he's pretty. So that's interesting to me because, you know, I went to chase him and he kind of turned and looked at me. So this is one of those moments where you kind of, you, you take the, what they volunteer because instead of him running scared, he turned and looked at me 
if I release him like that now, I plant a seed that will grow and he'll look for that. But I have to be careful because he is a stallion and he is really confident. If I do it too much, I might get him charging me. I'm not saying that that's his personality, but what I am saying is I don't know him to know which he is. That is a pretty trot. Roxy and Maggie both had that bigger trot. Maggie especially, her sister. Earlier we noticed that he looked pretty good leaded, which is one of the things we look for when he's out here running around, is how naturally good leaded he is. That's interesting to me right there because he turned to the inside, which again is another sign that he's more confident. Because a very scared horse would turn to the outside because they're afraid of me. This one's more confident, so he turned to the inside over there when I was being more assertive. Over here, I don't think he's necessarily facing away from me because he's scared. I think he just stopped and started sniffing the ground. So he really doesn't know much right now, but we can still tell a lot. And this is another interesting thing, like right there, what I've noticed, what I'm paying attention to, is when I chase him and I'm on his on side, which is the side that you would mount him from, when I'm on the on side, it's the side that he really tends to turn and face me. And if you notice both times that he was over on this side of the arena over there, that's where he was, that would have been his off side that was near me. And both times that's the side he doesn't turn and face me as much, which says he's more comfortable with me on his on side, which is the side that people usually lead them from. So I want to be aware of that because when I go to ride him, I'm going to be on both sides at once and I need him to be good on both sides. I wasn't, we, my intention wasn't to use this chasing around evaluation as training, but you're always training. So when I just grabbed the lead rope and came out here to, to catch Jack, he's like, run, 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 because we've been chasing him around. But what's happening right now is Jack and I are having a conversation, even though I'm talking to you. And so what just happened was he kind of was scooting away from me because we've been chasing him. And then when he looked at me, I stopped and backed up. And again, because he's a stallion, because he's more confident, he noticed right away that I backed up. So he comes towards me because he's thinking, can I dominate you? Could I be the leader? And so when I back away, I'm acting submissive and he comes towards me. Now, because I've had that little bit of a conversation and because he's looking at the camera being distracted, I know he's not nervous about me. So I'm gonna take a couple steps towards and I'm watching his body language. And right there, when his ear flicked away, I think, did he back up, did he flick away because he was scared and thinking about running or did he hear something outside the wall? I don't know, but I backed off. If I back off when he looks at me, he's gonna be more likely to come to me. So I'm gonna walk back up here. If he looks at me, I'm gonna back away. And then I'm gonna walk up towards him. He's looking away. I'm gonna stop and back up. He's gonna to start to get it in his head that he's controlling me. And that makes me kind of a curious object, especially to a stallion. So I come up here, he looks at me, I back away. And that's what draws him in. And it works especially well with stallions because they're very interested in controlling the situation. I'm still looking at his eye. You can see when I raise my hand, he flinched. But again, this is just that, that conversation. He's going, you're weird. You were chasing me away. Now, you're, now you act submissive. And this is how you get those horses interacting with you. Stallions happen to be easier. Did you see that right there? He just looks kind of, I don't know what the hand's all about. But that's what's going on in his mind. Hey, Jack. There you go. Good day. In the next episode, watch as Jack is introduced to the rope halter and stick and string.